Hi everybody, we're with Butter today and we are demoing the palpation of the body to limb, thoracic limb muscles. And the primary function of these muscles are to, one, support the body trunk, the weight of the body trunk between the thoracic limbs. And the other major function of these muscles is limb advancement or protraction and limb retraction or dragging the limb caudally. So we're gonna group these and demo them by innervation and we're gonna begin with the long thoracic nerve. This nerve is, originates from the brachial plexus around the level of the seventh cervical vertebrae. The long thoracic nerve innervates the serratus ventralis muscle. And its attachments are the dorsal medial aspect of the scapula and then it comes down like a fan and it attaches to the transverse processes of the caudal cervical vertebrae and through the ribs up to about rib seven. So it sits in here medial to that scapula like a big fan. The primary function of this muscle is to support that weight of the body trunk between the thoracic limbs. The second nerve we'll consider in the muscles it innervates are the dorsal branches of the cervical and thoracic spinal nerves. Now these are not branches of the brachial plexus per se, but these are branches just coming off between the intervertebral foramina and their dorsal branches. And these nerves will innervate the rhomboideus. So the rhomboideus attaches to the dorsal border of the scapula, and it also attaches to the head and the median raphe of the neck and spinous processes of some of the cranial thoracic vertebrae. And the primary um, action or function of the rhomboideus is to keep the dorsal aspect of the scapula depressed against the body trunk. So the third nerve we'll consider is the accessory nerve. Now the accessory nerve is not part of the brachial plexus, but it's actually a cranial nerve from the brain or brain stem. And it innervates three of these muscles we're considering today. So the first is the trapezius. Now the trapezius originates from the scapular spine, and it also then attaches to the median raphe of the neck and some of the, the cranial um, supraspinous ligament over the thoracic vertebrae, over the spinous processes of the thoracic vertebrae. And the function of this, like the rhomboideus, is to keep the dorsal aspect of the scapula depressed against the body trunk. The second muscle innervated by the accessory nerve is the omotransversarius. So the omotransversarius will span between the distal scapular spine, which is here, up to the wing of the atlas, or basically the first cervical vertebrae. And again, this is innervated by the accessory nerve. And the primary function of this muscle is to pull the limb cranially or protract it. Now, the third muscle we'll consider with the accessory nerve is the brachiocephalicus. The brachiocephalicus is a compound muscle. And the cranial part, which originates from the head and the raphe over the neck, it comes down and the distal part inserts onto the cranial brachium here, the cranial distal brachium, or the cranial distal humerus, I should say. So this muscle, the function of the brachiocephalicus, the cranial part is innervated by the accessory nerve, the distal part in the brachium is innervated by the brachiocephalic nerve. The brachiocephalic nerve is actually originates from the brachial plexus around the level of the sixth cervical spinal nerve. So this muscle has two innervations, the distal part by the sixth cervical spinal nerve derivative of the brachiocephalic uh, nerve and the more proximal cranial part innervated by the accessory nerve. The function of the brachiocephalicus is again, to pull that limb cranially or protract it. The fifth nerve we're gonna consider are the pectoral nerves. Now these are complicated and they also come from the brachial plexus and they come from the level between the sixth cervical spinal nerve and the first thoracic spinal nerve, but they innervate the pectoral muscles. So there are two pectoral muscles. The first is a deep pectoral, which comes from the length of the sternum and it comes in and inserts on the proximal medial humerus. The primary function of this muscle is limb retraction or pulling the limb caudally. The superficial pectoral, or the superficial pectoral muscles are also innervated by the pectoral nerves, and these go between the first two uh, cranial sternobrae into the um, proximal cranial humerus. And the primary function of this muscle is to pull the limb cranially, or, or protraction. The final nerve we're going to consider is the thoracodorsal nerve. This comes from the brachial plexus around the level of the eighth cervical spinal nerve. And this innervates the latissimus dorsi. And this is this great big muscle that originates from the spinous processes of the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae and the ribs back here. And they all come down into the proximal medial humeral shaft. 
And the primary function of this big muscle is to pull this limb caudally or retract the limb. Good boy, Butter. Good boy. So Penny has volunteered to show us a little different look of the pectoral muscles, and she likes to roll on her back. So if you consider the pectoral muscles from a ventral view, the superficial pecs come from the first two cranial sternobrae into the basically proximal cranial aspect of the humerus, so they sit like this. The big deep pectorals come from the length of the sternum, and they come into the medial aspect of the humerus, so they run like this. Okay, thanks Penny.